Hey, so we hear these terms all the time, low resolution versus high resolution. Uh, normally you don't get a call and say, hey, my image was really super high resolution. It's usually the opposite. It's, hey, what happened to my image? It's really blurry and it's really low resolution. Good morning, everybody. I'm Steve Looney from graphicdesignertips.com. I just got out of the office. It's Saturday morning. We work six days a week going over your files, print your files, and talking to graphic designers who send us the files. So this is a video to talk about the two terms, uh, high resolution and low resolution. There's no, there's no middle at resolution. There's nothing in the middle. Although you can make something kind of like medium quality, but in our world, it's either it's quality or it's crap. So what has happened over the last decade or so with with the emergence of the of the smartphone is everybody thinks that what they're seeing on their phone is going to translate well um, when it prints. And that's not not always the case. It's you know, a lot of times you may take a high quality photo and it's going to be put in a design layout that's going to be printed and it's going to come out great. But a number of times people are taking photos and they look really bright and they look really vivid and they look really sharp. And when they print out, they are grainy, what's called low resolution. So a lot of times people will tell me, you know, the photo I sent you was high res. So you can take in Photoshop, you can take any image with pixels, pull it into Photoshop and you can check the resolution that is it on it. And if it's a really blurry photo, I can bump that resolution up to say 300, which is like a minimum resolution you want for printing. All right. So I still turned crap. It's a high res, but it's still crap. That's the problem. So when I look at an image, I know how it's going to print. I can look at it. I zoom in a little bit. If I can see pixels without zooming in too much, then that's a problem. If it takes me a lot of zooming in to see the pixels, I know it's going to be fine. But for years and years and years, I was printing all the small stuff that fit on like a 12 by 18 sheet and less. So it was okay. But now that we're doing big vinyl banners, things on the sides of vehicles, uh, event boards, you know, just large format stuff. This is where it really comes into play, high resolution versus low resolution. So what I suggest to every graphic designer out there, which I had 10 years ago when I was making videos, is you need to get a stock photography account. They're very cheap nowadays. I'm not gonna name any um, because I'm uh, a part of a couple different ones and throughout the years I've, I've used so many, but purchasing the highest resolution photo that you can from these sites a lot of them you get your certain amount of credits that you can use and you just purchase the biggest one and then if you're doing it a little small piece you just make it smaller for that individual piece another big no-no is when you go on a web page and instead of downloading a file you actually pull a logo say off the the header of a website so in order for websites to run and load very quickly when we upload graphics, when I used to do web design, we upload graphics, uh, we save them for web out of our programs. Uh, and so the image quality is still there, but the file size is really low. So the minimum resolution for internet graphics is 72 resolution. So when you're looking at taking a 72 resolution image off of a website, a logo at the top and putting it on somebody's piece, and the minimum quality for printing should be 300 resolution, it's gonna look great on your phone, it's gonna look great on your computer screen, but once you print that baby, it's gonna be all pixelated and it's gonna be low res and it's gonna be crap. So you gotta be careful when you are doing this for customers, graphic designers, and end users you need to be careful when you're submitting stuff to a printer, ask them, what does the resolution look like on this? Because you may not know to ask that, but as a printer, if you send us something that's low res, you will absolutely 1000% be getting a phone call from me or one of our designers in our office. Because if we print something without letting you know that it is, it is um, there are issues with it, then a lot of times it will fall back on us because we were the last line of defense and you are the end user. You're just sending your files for your business. You don't know. And it's our job to make sure that it comes out perfect uh, for you guys. 
There are a million videos out there on YouTube. I used to make them with all my infographics and stuff popping in and charts and this and that and graphics. But you know what? This is my new office in my car right now. So I'm just telling you straight from experience, this is the problem with people not looking at their files and purchasing stock photography. You're going to get low resolution images and I just, I'll be honest with you, a lot of people come to us and the first thing I hear about them is a bad experience that they have with a graphic designer or a printing house. And we're here to end that, at least with us. When you come to us, we're gonna give you the best experience that you can get possible and feel comfortable coming back for more. I'm Steve Looney, Graphic Designer Tips. Let me know in the comments what you learned and any experiences you've been through with this type of stuff. Like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever. Um, ideas for new videos, let me know. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Love you. Peace.